Hey everyone, welcome back. Uh, in this final snake video, I want to try something a little bit different. Rather than walking you through more coding tutorials, I thought I'd challenge you to add a couple features to the game on your own. These coding prompts can all be done with techniques and patterns we've already covered, but don't be afraid to experiment with uncharted territory. If you haven't been following along with the series, there are links in the comments below and possibly somewhere in the corner if I've managed to figure out how YouTube cards work. This exercise is about learning and failure is part of that process. Along the way, if you get stuck, by all means, drop me a note in the comments and I'll give you a nudge in the right direction. Ready? Great. Traditionally, when you crash in the game of Snake, that's it, you're done. What if the player had a few hearts so they could take damage and continue playing? See if you can come up with a way to track health and display that information in the HUD. Have a look through the control nodes to see if you can find one for rendering textures, similar to how we used a Sprite 2D node to render our game sprites. Aside from the snake steadily getting faster, there's not much sense of urgency in this game. To mix things up, I thought it might be fun if the game occasionally spawned a piece of bonus food worth extra points. The value of that bonus decreases the longer it goes uncollected, eventually disappearing when it hits zero. This introduces the elements of panic and priority into the game. If you want to keep things simple, you can just use a static sprite to display the bonus food. I chose to animate mine using the animation player along with keyframes to adjust the modulation. Alternatively, you could explore the animated sprite node to achieve a similar effect. For an extra challenge, try building in a way to easily adjust the probability of these bonus drops. Making this drop rate easy to find and adjust will set you up for wiring that into a difficulty setting or for making levels with unique properties later on. Right now our game takes place all on one screen, but what if we wanted the game to play out in a giant arena far larger than our game window? This might sound complicated, but Godot actually has some built-in camera features that will handle all of this for us. You'll just have to figure out where to put the camera and identify which settings will keep the camera inbounds as it scrolls. When preparing for this video, I added some additional tiles to the tile map to make the scrolling background more apparent. If you want to explore that node further, this might be a good excuse to do so. The only obstacle in this game is the snake itself. But what if we added walls to make the level more interesting? We're already handling collisions, but right now we've only got logic to handle interactions between the head, tail, and food. So you need to extend that logic to account for colliding with walls as well. If you want to take things a step further, see if you can figure out how to design multiple room layouts and randomly select one each time you start a new game. Now that we've added walls, there's a chance food might spawn on top of a wall, leaving the player with no way to collect it. This is considered a soft lock, meaning the game hasn't frozen, but the player has no way to continue playing. Here are two possible approaches, each with its own trade-offs. The first would be to check for a collision between a new piece of food and the walls, re-randomizing its location until the food lands into an empty space. This method largely uses code we've already written, but could lead to performance issues if you have a level with a lot of walls. Another option would be to maintain a list of acceptable spawn points and select only from those. However, we're not currently tracking this information anywhere, so the trade-off here is having to devise a new system for that. If you want to keep food from spawning on top of the snake or future obstacles, like enemies, you need to design a system that can scale to accommodate more than just walls. As with most design problems, there are endless ways you might approach each one. Which solutions you choose will depend on your personal preferences, the limitations of your target platforms, and a number of other factors. There might be no wrong answers, but some are definitely more suitable than others. This exercise is as much about challenging you to program without a safety net as it is about developing your ability to weigh one solution over another. Remember that adding new features doesn't always mean having to learn new or complex stuff. In fact, the best solutions are often just a clever combination of the things you already know. And that is where I will leave you. I'd say good luck, but what I really wish for you is patience and determination. Yeah, f*** it. Good luck. I truly do appreciate you spending your time with me today and for making it through the whole series. If you'd like to support more content like this, please consider a like, subscribe, or share. And until next time, please be kind to yourself and be kind to others.